Welcome back to another video. Today we'll be taking a look at this device. This is the FujiNet adapter for an Apple II. So while I don't have an Apple II behind me today, we've got the C64, Atari 65, got a Mac SE, and then a compact portable one down there. Um, I did want to talk about the FujiNet adapter for the Apple II. So I picked one of these up a while ago and it's just been sitting around. Um, you know, I looked a number of times online for instructions, setup guides, and there's a few out there, but nothing I could find that really covered usage of this device end to end. So I wanted to make hopefully a short video talking about how to use this, how to get it online, what you can do with it, and just kind of general tips about it. So that's hopefully just what I've done. Stick around and let's see what we can find out about this FujiNet device. All right, so here we have an Apple II GS currently booted up off of the five and a quarter inch drive. This is just a disc that's got a little bit of a launcher and a few games on it. So yeah, just boot it up off the disc. We've got Frogger running here. Anyway, everything's working fine. So what I want to do today is install this device on my TGS. So this is the FujiNet adapter for the Apple II. So this plugs into the disk drive. Um, I don't know if you can quite see it on camera, but it's a connector that's been partially cut off so that it has the correct amount of pins to fit into the Apple II disk drive port. Um, we have the controller board here, and on the back side we have an SD card reader. All right, so when you want to install an SD card, uh, note that there's actually two places that fit on this board. So on the main processor board, there's a spot for the SD card here, but on the FujiNet board itself, this is the SD card slot you need to use. So I'll just kind of slide that in there. And note that this is just soldered on here um, through this header, and it's kind of held up by this piece of foam. So be a little careful with it, but it shouldn't cause you any troubles. So I'm going to go ahead and shut down the Apple II. I'm going to pull it out a little bit here so I can access the back. We'll disconnect our floppy drive and then carefully connect our FujiNet adapter. All right, so just like that, we have it connected. Floppy drives are currently disconnected, so let's go ahead and power it back on. And now you can see it's booting off of the FujiNet adapter. So this is just giving us some information about what it's currently emulating. So we'll just hit a key here to continue. Now if we want to configure it to connect to the network, we can hit C for config. Um, you can see in this case, I've already connected to my uh, Wi-Fi network here, which I've named Apple IInet. So if I hit C again for change SSID, this will go out and scan all of the uh, Wi-Fi networks out there that are available to the, to the uh, FujiNet here. So my Apple II net, I will connect. So we are successfully connected. Now all right, so once you're booted up into the FujiNet device, you have some options here. We have our SD card. We have these three pre-configured servers which contain uh, images, PO images for uh, Apple IIs. Um, so let's start by looking at some of these online images. So I'm gonna go to uh, apps.irata.online. And if you don't have this in your FujiNet, you can just hit E for edit and you can type in the host name. And then you'll be able to use that. So obviously that's not a real one. I'm just going to edit that and delete it out and hit enter. And then I'll go back to actually, I guess, manually type in empty to show that it's empty. Um, if you tried to connect to that, obviously it would fail because that's not a, a DNS name that it can resolve. But let's go to this apps.irata.online, which again was pre-configured on my card. Um, obviously when these are built, they're tested and make sure, and they make sure everything works. So. 
when I first booted this up and tried to connect to the test Wi-Fi network, I had to you know skip past that and go on to find my network. But I don't know what your particular FujiNet card is going to come with. Anyway, enough talk. Let's go to this one. So now we're browsing this repository of software that's on the internet on our Apple IIGS. We'll go to the Apple II folder. And let's go to games. And the only game here is the total replay, which is great because it's got like 131 games, I think. All right, so what we want to do here is we want to mount it. So we hit return. And then we have to select which disk drive we want it to mount in. I'm going to mount this one into disk drive one. Um, now you can mount it as read write, which is something you should not do for online uh, images. I don't know that the write is going to be enabled anyway. Um, depends on how their server is configured. But what you want to do is hit return or R to insert it as read only. So I'm going to hit enter, return. And now that's mounted down here on my first disk drive. So if we wanted to boot off that, all we have to do now is hit escape and it will go through the boot list here. So let me do that, hit escape. And this goes into the standard Apple IIGS boot. And it's emulating that disk drive one, but it's really reading it from the internet on that server. So let's just take a little bit to boot up. And there we go, we're in total replay. So I'm not gonna get into playing total replay. I mean, this works just like you think it should. Um, you know, Pac-Man, Pengo, all the total replay stuff's on here. Hey, there's me reflected in the screen. Hey, everybody. Um, depending on your internet speed, I guess it might take longer to load, but I think really it's just the Apple IIGS that's going to be the, uh, the slowest part of the experience here. All right, so let's do keyboard. And let's do customized. So left we'll do four, right six, up eight, down two. So I'm going to use the uh, numeric keypad here on my not 2 gs keyboard. And I'm going to say one player. All right. All right, here we go. We are playing Pac-Man connected to a disk image on the internet, on a 2GS. How cool is that? Over Wi-Fi, nonetheless. Anyway, so it works like you think it should. So if I do uh, open Apple control reset, it will reboot back to this disk image. It won't take you back to the FujiNet firmware. So it's just gonna reboot Total Replay, which is what you'd expect. And if we wanted to get back to the main FujiNet connections, we just have to hard power the machine. So let's do that. All right, now we are back at the uh, intro screen for the FujiNet. So hit any key to continue. Um, so you can see, see I still have my Total Replay uh, internet image mounted. So if I hit tab, I can hit E for eject. Uh, now one thing I had to learn the hard way in here is I've always got caps locks down because all of these commands are for uppercase letters. So now if I go up to my SD card, hit enter to look in the files, you can see I've got some PO disk image files here. Let's just go ahead and pick system.disk.po, hit enter. And now I can mount this one as read write because it's a local file. I don't need to worry about stepping on someone's toes or not having right access to it over the internet. So I'll hit W. And now you can see that is listed as drive slot one. So if I hit escape now, that should boot us up off that disk image. All right, and loading the advanced disk utility, we can see that, again, all of our disks here are available to us. All right, so let's talk about a couple of uh, tips that I had. Um, so when you're configuring the network, so if I hit C, um, and we can change the SSID here. So when it's scanning for networks, it'll show you everything, but note that the FujiNet itself only works with the 2.4 gigahertz wireless networks, not the uh, five gigahertz networks. If you have a router like uh, an Apple Airport, 
that has the same network name for both of the networks, then the FujiNet could struggle with that. So you have to make sure that you're on a 2.4 gigahertz network that isn't sharing a name for best results. It can work, but I found um, that with the shared networks, it doesn't work so well. Um, also, sometimes I have found that you do need to try to connect more than once. If it has trouble connecting, you can just rescan, reconnect, and it's always worked on the second try for me. Sometimes it doesn't work on the first try, but typically it does. But when it doesn't, the second try seems to work just fine. Um, if you hit eject here, it'll clear these out, which is great. Um, sometimes I'll find that the firmware just kind of freezes. Um, if you do things that it doesn't like, if you try to... Right, so I, I tried to change that empty to write, and now the system's frozen, I can't do anything. So just be careful what you're hitting, and if it does lock up, just give it a quick reboot. Not a big deal. Uh, the Fuji Net for Apple II is still a work in progress, so it's not super polished. Um, it does everything it needs to do. You just have to be a little careful when you're navigating through the systems here. Um, other than that, I think things have been going pretty okay. Those were really the only things that I struggled with when I was setting this up. Um, and again, you can add more hosts here if you can go out on the internet and find them. So that's kind of as far as I've gotten with this. Um, you know, it was my thinking that you could actually use this as an emulated network adapter for uh, an Apple IIGS, but I don't think that's the case, at least not yet. I know that's something that they're still working on and it's still under development, but I believe, as far as I can tell, that uh, none of the emulated devices are allowing it to talk directly to the internet. Um, with the exception of maybe this Mastodon image that I found on one of the servers where it does at least put out the current date. And uh, I don't know if it's getting that from the FujiNet or if that is actually being retrieved from the internet. It wasn't quite clear what that Mastodon application was doing. So let me just show you that really quick. All right, so what we're doing here is showing posts from Mastodon, which is a, uh, a Twitter replacement, I guess. It's a, it's a social network that's supposed to be like Twitter. So it's just going through here. I uh, know I know that the one I have is the older model. You can update the firmware, but the new model doesn't have this cutoff uh, connector and looks much more professional. So uh, I think stay tuned to the development cycle of this thing and uh, we'll see some really nice enhancements made to it as we go. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed and we'll catch you in the next one. Make sure to like and subscribe and watch more of our videos later. Bye!